Mirio's original. And welcome to Web Crawlers. This is another mailbag episode where we play your voicemails, read your emails, but we will not read your uh, reviews because we have uh-huh. all but vanished from Apple Podcasts. Yeah, can't access them. Can't, can't access, access them. them. We've been erased. Yeah, we have as pretty as a producer, as an Erios co-founder. This has been very annoying. As we know, Apple is changing changing its database. Apple has said, um, let's change things around, and the people and the creators are have vanished. Expendable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're subscribed, you still see it. Yeah. But like you can't search for it and find it. So if you're if you're subscribed, but also listen, go go to Spotify. Their yes. platform is like so much better. Like just it looks better. It's more organized. Mm-hmm. Spotify, yeah. Stitcher, I think also, right? Stitcher's great up. Yeah. There's a lot of places. It's not just Apple. You know what? It's not just Apple. Pocket Casts is there's, a great. There's so many different places you can go. So let's, you guys, put get, pack your bags. Let's get out of Apple land. <laughs> let's <laughs> take a field trip to yeah. They never Even liked us anyway. has its own player. <laughs> Okay, cool. Oh, well, there you go. Um, Anyways, should we get into uh, a voicemail? We have some emails. Okay, fuck. Let's get into those. You know, (laughs) just fucking, I don't know. Okay, here's one. This is from Laura. It's called Love Has One and Other Ramblings. So I just listened to your Love Has One episode yesterday. What the what? And today I saw this. Do you remember the Love Has One cult from Colorado? Yeah. There's this woman who leads it. Her name, they called her mother, I think. Oh, right. Yeah. And they ended up moving to like Hawaii and they got kicked out. And then like someone went missing. Well, she died. Amy Carlson. They found her dead, but like mummified. <gasps> like they had put flowers on her eyes and they don't know how long she's been dead. Like months. Oh, my God. Uh- <laughs> like her body has just been like there. Whoa. She was the ex McDonald's employee who like turned dead or leader. murdered. I think she just died. She was found wrapped in Christmas lights, covered in glitter, and her oh, her eyes were missing. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry, it's crazy. Someone ate those eyes. You know, someone ate oh. those eyes. Oh, or buried them. True. An eye tree. You never know. Oh my God. And then anyway, the email continues. On a side note, you also talked about Landmark in the past. Once I had a job that sent people to Landmark as professional development. I was really Mm. young and I only worked at the company for two to three months. So I don't even listen. I don't even list them on my resume. But at the time, I didn't know what it was. I was so naive. I thought Landmark was like Dale Carnegie or something where you could (laughs) go and refine your business acumen. Really glad I didn't end up sticking around. Jesus Christ. Yuck. Crazy. We should revisit Landmark, see what they're up to now. Yeah, what are they up to? Okay, well, let's get into some uh, voicemails. Hi, love callers. Um, this is Emily. Uh, first, I want to say I love you guys. And second, um, I was listening to a mailback episode today, and they talked about, um, like, two callers called in about the fucked up things that happened in their high school based off of Kathy Dunn's April Fool's episode. And it also triggered a memory for me, but it was in elementary school, I think, around fifth grade. Um, also, this is kind of, like, shockingly fucked up that they had us do this, so feel free to not play it. But I grew up mm-hmm. in upstate New York, and my town is kind of a historic spot on the Underground Railroad. And in fifth grade, oh, no. I remember they had the entire, I don't know if it was the entire school or the entire fifth grade class reenact being on the Underground Railroad. And they made it like a game where we had a special map and you had to run around to different classrooms and they had quilts on the outside of their um, like door with different patterns. And you had to kind of guess based off of the quilt pattern, if the classroom was safe to go into oh. or if it wasn't safe for you. And I think you just got, like, sent back to your original classroom. Honestly, like, horrifying looking back on that. Like, the, the, like that 
people in charge thought that was an appropriate thing to do for <laughs> fifth graders. Um, anyway, the other thing is, in, I think it was in the same grade. They had us have a civil war day where we reenacted civil, like oh, the civil God. war, and we were divided up into the north and the south. I remember you got to, um, I think you got to request if you wanted to be in the north and the south, and I think oh, Jesus. everyone requested being in the north. Oh. Um, so oh. some people got their second choice, and I'm pretty sure I had to be in the south. And I got this really weird dress from um, with my mom from like a, a second Goodwill or something. But anyway, um, this is a downer, super fucked up. Uh, I can't believe that they, my administration like made a game out of it. Um, yeah. But I just wanted to say that New York is just as bad as Indiana or Florida. Um, yeah. Anyway. I love you guys. Thank you for continuing to push out content. Um, bye. Oh, like I get the intention that like when you learn interactively, like it sticks with you more, but there's something in the application where like, if you're turning it into a game, then you're always going to associate it with like it being fun. And like the underground railroad was not, fun like you're not understanding like the gravity of the situation like I think that there's other ways to I don't know like the black history quiz bowl like that was I guess yeah. a, a game I don't know but like it, I learned you so much about black history process information and I remember it yeah I don't know I think there's other ways to do it yeah. where it's engaging it's, and hands-on but it's right. not it's like weird. we're going to pretend <laughs> that we were in on the underground railroad like no you'll never understand what that experience is like yeah because they were probably like having fun and like this yeah. is fun no it's like they made right. it seem like it was a fun time yeah. yeah no yeah okay next but I love hearing about your fucked up things <laughs> happen at elementary school. It's fascinating. It's crazy. I wish I could remember. I'm sure crazy shit happened. Now I'm like, did I school. do anything weird when I was teaching? But like, I think I was okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was oh, okay. Oh, boy. Hey, this message is for web crawlers. Uh, hey, web crawlies. Um, <laughs> my name is Kevin. Uh, I was just listening to the mailbag this week. Um, and I just wanted to call in with my own secret entity. Uh, so this morning, I started my work day. I got an email from a coworker named Joshua uh, that <clears throat> I haven't talked to him in a while, but he was trying to see about uh, getting a uh, a ship switched. So we did that. Uh, later on, uh, I was looking through some old pictures uh, from this past you know twelve months of the pandemic, uh, and I came across pictures from my trip to Joshua Tree. So there's two Joshua's there. Uh, that was like, okay, whatever. We're cruising. But then I get a, a call immediately from a customer um, that was named Joshua. Uh, as I was looking at the Joshua picture. And, uh, yeah, that was real weird. Uh, it really made me feel weird. I We we deal with a company that's like a tree company. Like, a, they cut down trees not the greatest, but we, uh, I was saying, told my manager that if it was that company that that guy Joshua worked for, I would have hung up, logged out for the rest of the day and gone home, which I was already home, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Anyways, that was my synchronicity. Um, I hope that's not too long, and I hope it's not too rambly. Uh, you guys are wonderful. La, la, la. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. That's a lot of Joshua's. Yeah. I wonder if he was yeah. listening to the YouTube YouTube album Joshua Tree. That's right. That would be that Seriously. would be too many Joshua's. Yeah. Too many Josh's. <laughs> Joshing around. Okay, next one. Hi, this is Mallory calling for the web callers. This is the first time I've ever called. Whoop, um, welcome. And I was just thinking about a movie that I oh, this is about synchronicity, by the way. Um I was just thinking about a movie that I watched last night, just now, and um, I couldn't remember the name of it, but it had Russell Crowe in it. Glad you. And then beautiful I mind. Was listening to a podcast. It is a competing podcast. So I'm Lame not as. The name of it, but <laughs> they said podcast. what it was called in the podcast. It's unhinged, and somebody in a sentence oh, said, God. 
blah, blah, blah. They were unhinged. <gasps> and I was like, yeah, that's what it was. Anyway. Whoa. So that is my asynchronous, not asynchronicity, synchronicity. Um, anyway, love the show. Bye. That movie was so bad. Did you see it? It like just came out on like video on demand. No. no. He just it? plays a guy who has road rage. He has road rage and like someone cuts him off and then like he just harasses the woman for the rest of the movie. I kind of <laughs> like that. I love I Yeah, love that. You, you relate. Someone, yeah. <laughs> I get that. I get it. <laughs> Hi, this is for the web crawlers. This is Mallory again. I'm slowing it down this time, and I'm apologizing for being such a spaz. I was really nervous. That was the first time I had ever called. Well, you did great, um, Mallory. So Come I just on. wanted to apologize, and I really <laughs> hope you understood what I was talking about. It yeah. was about Russell Crowe, yes. and I thought it was interesting. So <laughs> I really hope you can understand. Have a great day. Goodbye. All of the it was listeners very coherent. have the yeah, same social fine. anxiety I have, which is you say something <laughs> and then you think about it for the next like four hours. You're like, God, did that sound so stupid? A hundred percent. And then everyone else yeah. is going, what are you talking about? And I'm going, I just need to apologize. Please <laughs> let me apologize. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Hi, this message is for the web crawlers. Um, this is Stephanie. I called about being in um, immigration quarantine in middle school, and I didn't hate the sound of my voice as much as I thought I would, so I had to call back <laughs> to tell you guys um, about this crazy murder slash suicide, murder suicide, yeah, um, that happened in New Orleans right after Katrina. Um, I don't know if you guys know about it, but you should, because it's nuts. Um, the, this couple stayed in the city. Um, they were like mid to late 20s, um, mid 20s, I don't know. Anyway, they stayed in New Orleans during the storm and like threw block parties and just like loved the um, kind of like apocalyptic feeling of, you know, being able to just drink outside and flash cops so your neighborhood stayed safe and all that. Um, but anyway, so they moved in together and after the storm, they were having a hard time adjusting to normal life. And he he also was a war veteran and, of course, you know, has probably had a bunch of PTSD and all of that. But anyway, um, he ended up killing her and left her body for a few days in their apartment um, uh. at, like, 60 degrees and, you know, went to work like normal. Um, and then he decided he needed to get rid of the body, so it made sense to cut it up. So he cut her up and he had her, he put her legs and arms in pans, um, seasoned, maybe to cover the smell because he didn't actually eat her, Um, but he put her arms and legs in pans in the oven and um, I think her torso, no, her hands were in a pot on the stove Um, and he had like written all over the walls, but anyway, he went on this crazy bender um, spent all his money on like strippers and booze and stuff um and then decided to jump off the roof of a hotel and kill himself and he had a note with his key in there explaining everything and the cops went and found it um their their names are zach and addy you should totally look it up it is insane and then there's like a part two um from her best friend it is wild i've seen everything i can about it and i think it'd be an awesome episode Love you guys. Bye. Whoa. That's crazy. That man was Army Hammer. Oh my yeah. God. Look at did you type them in? They look like two they look What's like What's the name? Zach, Zach and, and Addie. Addie. They're Zach they and look Addie. like interesting people. Oh yeah. They've gone to Burning oh. Man for sure. <laughs> oh. So, so okay. why did they kill what was I don't know why why he killed her. I don't know. Whoa, that's wild. Yeah, we got to look into that. That's weird. Boyfriend cut up corpse, cooked it. So is this his... They they have a picture of a kitchen. Is this the kitchen that... Oh, there's a documentary about it. Best feature documentary, Zach and Addie at the UK Film Festival. Wow. Wow. Gotta watch that. I guess they have pictures, oh my God, of their home. 
it doesn't look great. <laughs> Apparently they were survivalists, it says. I don't really, is that oh. like doomsday Yeah, they're preppers? trying to survive the their thing? living conditions. Yeah. <laughs> that shitty apartment. It, it's ABC's crazy. final witness revisits the sad tale of Addie Hall and Zach Bowen. It's weird that he didn't eat her, that he cooked her but didn't eat her. He's trying to cover the smell, apparently. Yeah. Well, the way to cover a smell isn't to cook it. That makes it worse. Oh, Oh my God. Five-page suicide note. uh, On the walls of his apartment in spray paint, they found these messages. Please call my wife. I love her. I'm a total failure. Look in the oven. Please help me stop the pain. Oh, he was a war vet, she said. He had PTSD. Yeah. Oh, it's horrible. Jesus. Okay. Alrighty then, next. on to the next. Message. Hey, <laughs> this message is for web crawlers. This is Amber from Oregon. Are you guys getting tired of me calling it? <laughs> I'm kind of a pain in the ass. Um, but I have been binging your shows and wanted to talk a little bit about a recurring dream that I used to have, um, that actually kind of wrapped up at the end of it. And it happened for a good, like maybe eight or nine months, um, when I was a teenager. Now I've actually had this dream analyzed a couple of times, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it just because. I find it really interesting, even to this day, um, to hear other people's input on what it could possibly mean, because I've been told a few different things from people. So, okay, a little bit of a backstory. Um, When I was about 12, my brother, my older brother, Chad, um, he killed himself. He uh, actually took his own life by shooting himself, and I found him, and I was too young to really comprehend that. So, you know, I was put into counseling. Um, you know, I went through a lot. I ended up with, like, PTSD. Yeah. Um, but anyway, for, well, it was, like, a year later, I started having this dream. And in this dream, I was in this big open field. Like, I could see myself sitting on this bench in this huge open field. And for some reason, I had my eyes closed. It was almost like they were glued shut. You know, like, how in dreams, you're like, you, you really want to run, but you can't run. And mm-hmm. you feel like you're kind of in sludge and the, that kind of feeling, only it was me not being able to open my eyes. And, like, it was a gorgeous field, like, poppies and stuff. And my brother was sitting next to me, and he kept saying, open your eyes, Amber. you got to open your eyes. Open your eyes, Amber. And it was like, that was it. That was the whole dream. And I would have this almost, like, every other night. I mean, if not every night, for months. And it drove me insane. And then all of a sudden, one night, I started that dream, same exact dream, and I was finally able to open my eyes. And I looked over, and my brother was, like, older and like than he was when he passed away, and he was smiling at me. And he said, and this is exactly what he said, he said, you overcame what I couldn't overcome. Whoa. And so I've had a lot of people, like, analyze this as in, like, like, maybe it was my brother trying to tell me something, or it was, like, my own psyche, like, something in my life that I had finally, like, overcame or wrapped up. But for the life of me, I can't think of anything, like, in my life that I had overcome. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a bumbling idiot most of the time, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but um, I'd love to hear your guys' like, analogy of it, if you could. And Hong Kong, you guys are seriously amazing. Like, you helped me pass the day. I like what it, it cuts off. Okay. Well then I'll say to that, like, I don't know what the eyes close or open thing is necessarily, but I definitely believe that stuff is your brother visiting you for sure. I actually was just talking yesterday with someone whose like a uh, grandfather had passed and they had the exact same experience of like, Really? I was seeing my grandfather like on a bench, Ooh. like in my dreams. And then he was like totally fine. And like, we gave me a hug, like, And I think in our our episode about near-death experiences, they always say like it's in a comfortable place or like some place in nature where you usually go or like some place that seems safe to you. So I totally believe that our loved ones can visit us, especially in our dreams when we're in like a different like state of mind. Um, And uh, yeah, I think that was totally your brother. I don't know like about like 
maybe like eyes open versus eyes shut. Maybe it's just like a perception thing or reality. Like maybe you're able to be open to the world in a way that he felt like he never could be or something. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. But that's really cool. Wow. Yeah. I'm curious about how it made her feel. Yeah. Like call right. back or email us like, were you comforted or were you scared or were you like motivated? Right. Like how did that, how did that make you feel? I'm curious. Right. Okay. Hey, web crawlers. It's <laughs> Rachel. Uh, I guess there's a few of us. So I don't know if that, that says all that much. Um, mm-hmm. But I was just listening to her mailbag and I left, I left a real sweet review for you guys at, at Maria's Thank you. behest. That's, <laughs> Thank that's you. Why Thank I think you. you got so many new reviews. <laughs> And I said that um, you guys have a really special relationship with your fans. And you read it. And when you read it, you said that my my name was my circle, number 16781417. You get money if you add me. I'm, I'm looking at my Apple account now. I don't know how my name ended up being that. I've never heard these words uh, in my entire life. I am what? so perplexed by it, but uh, yeah, I guess you guys have given have given me a new mystery. Um, anyways, thanks. Oh, she's saying her um, oh her like Apple Podcast name. Yeah, for the review was like something crazy. <laughs> and she doesn't know how that happened. <laughs> That's so funny. She must have got like hacked or something at some point. Yeah, you where got it's hacked. Like, yeah, <laughs> where it's like one of those things where it like leaves spam where it's like, follow me and you'll win $500. <laughs> follow me, you win free iPhone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got hacked. <laughs> Bitch, you okay. got hacked. Next message. Hey, this message is from web crawlers. This is Jimmer from Oregon. Again, <laughs> are you sick of me yet? Because I'm kind of sick of hearing my own voice. Um, anyway, <laughs> Everyone's I asking always that. listen to your podcast while I'm working, and I'm always, like, hearing stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have to call in and say something. Because um, there's all these weird synchronicities. And let me tell you, like, I have had a life. Like, <laughs> some weird shit happened in my life. I don't know if we're allowed to cut, but I did it, so it's there. Fuck um, yeah. Anyway, Fuck yeah. so... <laughs> on the topic of uh, reoccurring dreams, I've already talked about one of mine with my brother, but this one is another one that was really odd, and it kind of, like, foresaw the future, so this one's kind of interesting. Um, wow. When I was little, I grew up in a town called Chester, California. It's, like, right at the base of Mount Lassen. Uh, my mom actually worked in Lassen National Forest, so I grew up what hearing a lot about the volcano and how it was active, and um, I used to have these nightmares that were, like, we were, I was at a friend's house, and the volcano was erupting, and I couldn't find my mom. Like, it was all about trying to find my mom, because there's, like, only two roads. Like, one main road goes through town, and there's, so technically, there's, like, two ways out. And one of the ways was blocked, so there was only one way out, and I couldn't find my mom this whole dream. And I had it all the time when I was growing up. Um, actually, it happened up until we moved away from the area when I was about eight years old. Um, so fast forward to a few years ago, my mom actually was in the fire that happened in Paradise, California, which oh, is no. actually only about an hour and a half away from Chester. Um, I had moved away from Paradise like a year prior to this, so thankfully I wasn't in it. Um, but that day, my mother called me and said, oh, my God, the town's on fire, and she couldn't get out. And the phone reception was so bad because it had taken out the phone lines and stuff. I couldn't get all of her. So, you know, it was exactly like my dream where there was this fire coming through town, kind of like the lava coming through town and like eating everything. And I couldn't find my mom. So, you know, it was kind of like a weird like synchronicity where like I foresaw the future. Of course, my mom is okay. Um, She's moved up here to Oregon now. She lost everything. She was stuck in the fire for about... 10 hours Ooh. that day. Um, her car still has like melting, like melted spots on it, but oh she's God. okay. Thank God. Cause you know, a lot of people sadly lost their lives, um, which rest in peace to them seriously. And yes, yeah, that was my weird thinker to see. Oh, and I had the weird driving dream too. That's the episode yeah. I was just listening to was about like, you said you um, had had a weird driving dream where you were in the back seat and couldn't get to the front. I had that same dream where it was like the car was going and I was like in the back seat and I was like trying to get into the front seat to like drive the car. Then it ends. 
<laughs> How weird. I'm so glad yeah. her mom is okay. Do you remember That's those terrifying. those videos from that Paradise Fire of people like driving through the f- fire? It's so that scary and all the poor animals. Crazy. I know. Oh, so oh horrible. Uh, people are just insane. like, we're going to die. We're going to die. Yeah. It's just like fire. Like you don't know what's yeah. tires terrifying. Could melt on your car. Oh, oh, how horrible. How horrible. My parents canyon in Malibu was once on fire like that. Obviously not to the same extreme, oh. although their neighbor's houses did burn down. Oh, right. Thankfully, those were my parents house was safe. But they had to drive down their canyon, and it was like that where both sides of the hill oh were on fire. Not to that extreme, but like so but terrifying. Just seeing it, yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. This is for the web crawlers. This is Mallory Puntley. Um, I was just listening to a mailbag episode about Immigration Day, and I too had an Immigration Day. Oh. Um, <laughs> this was That's so crazy. It been probably 2002. Um, so not that long ago and when i graduated i think they were still having it so that was like 2010 so you know way too long uh but yeah i also dressed up went and got my like immigration papers stood in line and also got quarantined just like your caller oh that God. i just heard <laughs> crazy stuff very weird looking back anyway that's all bye so weird I really hope they weren't racially profiling when they were quarantining people. Uh, I'm sure they were. <laughs> I'm sure they were. This is crazy. Okay, last message of the day. This is for the web crawlers. This is Mallory again. And good lord, I cannot believe I'm calling a fourth time. <laughs> but I'm listening to your animal, the Mallory uh, show. Your animal whatever episode right now. And um, listening to her talk about her otter story. I had to share this story, so I wasn't actually there for this story. This is like, you know, I heard my husband talk about it, but so my husband and his ex-wife and their kids went to the aquarium probably like uh, five years ago, if I had to guess, five, six, seven, um, and he, they went up to the squid at the aquarium, and it was like not like it was like hiding it wasn't looking at anybody and my husband walked up and put I don't know if he put his hand on the glass but just like went up to the thing up to the glass and it came out and like put its little um I almost said fin (laughs) tentacle (laughs) right yeah um up to the glass and they have like a moment oh god octopus teacher like looked at each other and he he, like felt the spirit of this squid that's and so his ex wife was like, Stop it. <laughs> like, like, you're freaking people out. Like, I guess there were people around that were like watching, like, what the Oh hell my is? God, could you imagine? Um, <laughs> Stop so fucking now, that squid. I <laughs> looked up squid spirit animal I and doing that right now. personality or whatever, like the spirit animal description is exactly like exactly his personality. So I thought Your that was so crazy. Is so so and I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Okay, bye. That's cool. Oh, my God. I can't. Can you imagine being in an aquarium and looking over and there's just a guy there with his hand up to the glass and there's a squid in him connecting and you'd be like. I would marry him immediately. I know. I'd be like, this is more like I would pay extra as I left. I'd be like, look, I got more than I bargained for here. Yeah. You guys, please. Take That's a whole money. exhibit. It says uh, yeah. spirit of the squid, someone who is intuitive, right brained, lighthearted, agreeable, can teach them so much about. Um, uh, can teach others about themselves and how to compromise in life. I mean, seems beautiful. It's yeah, not me. that's for sure. <laughs> what wow, were you, Melissa. What did she say? You were uh, a deer. Um, a deer. A deer. Yeah. I saw a deer today. <gasps> what? Yes, was I saw me? a deer. Yeah, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at one right now. Stop by to say hi. <laughs> did you guys have a moment? Did you go paw to paw? No, but animals really do like any woodland creature. I'm like obsessed with woodland creatures, but they really don't take to me. You know how there's some people that can like hold butterflies and like birds land on them. I yeah, am... like squirrels eat out of their hands. Yeah. Like um, like Spencer Pratt yeah, with his hummingbirds. Oh, with his hummingbirds. So crazy. Oh, right. Not me. They're, like animals do not 
trust me. And I don't know why <laughs> they should, because I'm not going to hurt them. But there's something about my energy where they're like, all right, all right, I'm leaving. <laughs> do you like, feel no. do you feel nervous around them? No, I'm always like, hey, how's it going? And they're like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. That's the opposite for me. <laughs> like that, that possum just like walked into my house like, hey, what's up? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I have to, there's something I've got to do to make myself more likable to animals because I am. Cover yourself in honey honey food and (laughs) and turkey (laughs) and ham. Yeah, lather myself in honey and then just just bring a honey baked ham wherever you go. (laughs) They'll love me then. Walnuts in your pocket. Then they'll finally love me. Um, anyways, guys, please keep calling in. If you have any connections at Apple or just want to tweet at them, <laughs> tell them like, what the fuck's going on, y'all? Uh, put our podcast back up. Uh, and then uh, we will see you all next week. I am Allie Honey Baked Ham Siegel. I am Melissa Nuts in Your Pocket Stetton. <laughs> yeah, you are. And I'm Maria. We don't want anything to do with you, Blasucci. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. An Erio's original. Powered by ACAST.